It's in the middle of winter right now in Wisconsin and it is so cold. It's so cold that we are excited when our car starts. <laughs> oh, okay. Ooh. It started. <laughs> it's so cold that you can't store soda outside, otherwise it becomes pop. It's so cold that if you go outside before letting your hair dry after a shower, it literally turns into icicles. Sometimes I don't even know why we live here. So we went to Texas. We are here at Universal Rocks near Dallas, Texas, and Ed and I are with Paul from Custom Reptile Habitats. And if you remember, Paul is the one who sent us the new enclosure for Nearly Headless Snake, our garter snake. What's amazing about Universal Rocks, I think, is that they make this incredibly realistic rock and trees and other plants and naturalistic decor, and you honestly can't tell the difference between what's real and what's artificial. So I can't wait to see what all they've created in there. So Paul, what is the plan for today? Well, today we've been working behind the scenes for a few months now, talking about the exhibits and doing something really cool. Let's go down and meet my mate Stuart and Sounds good. Uh, go shopping. All right. G'day, Stuart. You're home. That sounds like an Australian yeah. accent here. Who's that? Hey, mate. Hey, Paul. <laughs> Got some friends with me. <laughs> how you doing, buddy? <laughs> good. Hey, Hello, sorry. Emily. How are you? Good. How are you nice, doing? <laughs> nice to see you again. Come on in. Come on into the, the work in progress. Awesome. You have a unicorn in your shop. That's right, that's right. There's a pig bench. Oh, there's a pig bench oh, yeah. and yet yeah, whatnot. Good. <laughs> well, this is Stuart, and he is the owner of Universal Rocks, which I think it's really cool. This is like a family run business, right? Sure is. Yep. We've got four kids, my wife. We've been doing this 22 years. I feel so tall sitting on this Komodo dragon, by the way. This is awesome. We're going to build a cage for you for this too, by oh, the way. Oh, perfect. Good. Nice, <laughs> nice. So what got you into Universal Rocks? Well, um, firstly, I was a, a landscaper. So my own little business landscaping. So I loved theming. Um, and I, that, that sort of got created because of um, having some turtles and frogs and things like that when I was young in Australia. And I had to create habitats for them. But really what sparked me on is I went to Disneyland and Disney World when I was 20 years old. And it was fantastic. But the biggest thing is I had my own landscaping business. And I saw this theming that was happening there. And I thought, oh, wouldn't it be good if I could learn how to do that? So I, I got back and a few years later I paid a gentleman to teach me how to do that out of cement rock, which is pretty much what they do in um, Disney World and a lot of the theme parks around the world. I quoted on the Rainforest Cafe in Sydney. I thought I got that job. I didn't get that job. The company that did that did a similar system to what I do today. And uh, that got me into creating lightweight rocks and, and wow. off we went. And that was like 22 years ago. So it seems like you do a lot of things other than reptile decor, right? Sure, sure. So being the landscaper, the first thing I saw with this material is I could make waterfalls for backyards, waterfalls for ponds. But typically in winter, um, ponds finish. No one buys ponds and waterfalls. In summer, they do. But in winter, uh, aquarium and reptile products are big. So you do a lot of like outdoor landscaping during the summer yep. and then a lot of reptile and zoo landscaping, I suppose, oh. in the winter months. Ab absolutely. What are some of your favorite installations you've done at zoos? Uh, Sydney Wildlife World, for starters. That was a, a, right in um, the dead center of Sydney on Sydney Harbour. And uh, we did um, every exhibit when it opened up. And what's like your favorite one in the States, would you say, that you've done? I know you recently did the Dallas Zoo, right? Dallas, Dallas Zoo, yep. We just did a Parenti exhibit, which is the biggest Australian lizard exhibit. Yeah. That was that was um that's not a huge job, but it was a nice other sort of exhibit that we've done there. So a lot of zoos have you build the enclosures at their facility, right? But they don't have to do that, do they? No, one of the the main things that this material makes it possible for is to uh, send products and to do it on site. So it's really easy to use. So I think our, our niche is the fact that, you know, the curators can easily do small enclosures themselves. Okay. Mm -hmm. So really our line of 800 odd items fits into that beautifully. So our zoo is going to be the same as that, just on steroids. Absolutely. And, and really, I don't need to build these cages. You've got Paul and some other people that have carpentry skills. So you're just going to buy all the bits and pieces we can go over each habitat and i can give you my advice and whatnot but it's going to be just okay. a fun sort of big lego nice. project putting it together well that all sounds great would you mind showing us around universal rocks absolutely let's go 
So this is your showroom, right? Yep. And it seems like you're doing a lot of remodeling. There's a lot going on. This is actually the third time in 12 years we've changed this around. Uh, one of the big things that when you came through there, you went under a cave, didn't you? Yeah, the cave was awesome. Okay, so that's one of a dozen panels that we have to create. There's different, different texture rocks that we've molded throughout Australia and America. Mm -hmm. So then they become big flexible panels if you want, or we can make them rigid. So we're going to promote a lot more of man caves. Oh, okay? nice. We joke around when we see here all this man caves. Oh, I've got the best man cave. That's not a man cave. That's like me holding a knife and saying, that ain't a knife, you know. <laughs> it's not a man cave. A man cave is a cave. So come on in here and we'll show you what all we're right. talking about here. Look at this. Once again, we haven't finished everything. We're right in renovation stage. But can you just imagine this in your in your home for a guy with he's got a pinball machine and snooker table and uh, kegs and all the rest? This so, is a man cave. This is a man. <laughs> <laughs> so Emily, what I'm really excited about this section over here is is the total new new rebuild on our hot tub. So can I show you that? Obviously? Nice. Yes. Yes. What the goal really here was. You know, there's millions of hot tubs. There's actually five and a half million people that have hot tubs in America. Wow. Okay, but they all sit on top of the ground. They don't really blend in with the landscape. And me being a landscaper has like, well, what can I do? I've got the best looking rocks. Why don't I turn some of these into ponds? When you sit in this, you're immersed in nature, immersed in your landscape, rather than just looking down at it. So pretty cool. Yeah, I love that the water feature actually comes in and falls into the hot tub. Absolutely. So Emily, uh, one of the things I want to show you is this This is a, a bubbling rock that I've just made. The real one's out the back, so I'll show you that. That weighed about 5,600 pounds, oh like really, really heavy. My truck couldn't take it. We had to get it delivered. Turn it into a bubbling rock, so let me just plug that in. Now there'll, wow. be, there'll be lights down the bottom. Look at that. It's just incredible. That is so neat. Okay, well now I've got to know what's behind these doors. <laughs> these big dungeon doors? Yeah. Come on, let's go. Let's have a, have a look in here. So first thing, look behind you. That robot has the ability to carve. You program it in these big blocks of foam. You can carve anything. So if you wanted some, some cool sign on the front of your place, you know, maybe like a, a big a big sign with your name, but a huge anaconda wrapped around it. Uh. You know, something like that. But this machine will let you do that. At the moment, we're, we're just making these. This is, huh. this is for um, a wedding. This, these are going to sit on the table. We're going to paint these. So the um, machine takes care of the bigger chunks that have to be removed. And then you have uh, artists here who do the fine detailing. Absolutely. So the foam, you know, what, what got me into that is everything that everything we do to make our rocks, that material can be used to cover the polystyrene so it'll last for, for years and years. So okay. that's what this spray booth is about. Um, so this paints the foam and kind of finishes them? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yep. You know, when most people go to the mall, they are so excited to buy clothes, but we're buying rocks today and I am so happy right now. Look, there's like this rock. This could go into one of the species that we're planning a basalt theme for because basalt is that dark colored rock. We're actually going through each species that we'll have in the zoo and trying to replicate their natural environment. So I think that would work out well for that. Ooh, look at this one. Basking platform right there. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So between these four trees, only one of them is real, guys. Can you guess which one it is? I'll give you a few seconds to, uh, to decide. And the answer is this one. This is the real one, but you can't tell. This is where we make aquariums. And, and look behind you, this is, this is one the boys are working on. This is an acrylic aquarium. So they've been buffing and polishing this today. Man, that's uh, thick. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. But just part of what's happening every day at Universal wow. Rocks. Yeah. I saw back here, there's like those tubular shaped ones. Uh, absolutely. We're actually hoping to do like a crawl space in Rex, our alligators enclosure, with like a, a clear dome that pops up in the middle so that kids or adults, I'll want to do it too, can like crawl through and poke their head in the, yep. her enclosure. Yep. Well, we've done that before. You have? Yeah, oh, that before. okay. So, we, <laughs> so you'll be able to we, do it? We'll, we'll 
blow a mold to do that. Oh, yeah, so perfect. we can do that for you. Yes, okay. I'm so excited for her enclosure. This is what you want to do with it, isn't it? That's exactly it. Yeah. <laughs> so you can like look in her enclosure. Yep. I want to show you also, this is, a, this is our around nature line of um, terrariums and aquariums. These are really cool. Oh, Sell geez. lots of those for spiders and, and, and insects and things like that, but bigger ones for all sorts of frogs and lizards and all the rest. So. That's cool. You can see it from all directions. Yes. Then. And another thing, Emily, look at this. Okay. Everyone's got a five gallon or 10 gallon or 15 gallon yeah. aquarium sitting at home, don't they? Okay. Oh, Just, you know, we're they're everywhere. Right, they're everywhere. Tom, our brains over there in the aquarium department, he's developed these. So these get glued onto the top of that. And then you can turn these on the side. Now you have wow. your own little terrarium. That's um, probably the easiest conversion I think I've ever seen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you so. just glue this right onto the opening. Uh, yeah, on, on the OB. top, on the yeah. top. It's just a cool invention. Another, yeah. new, another new thing we've got. You have a really creative team. There's lots of stuff going on, but I got lots more to show you. So Emily, you remember the rock I showed you inside that was running? We've turned it on. Yeah. So this is the real one, okay? This is our um, area where we have to keep originals of the rocks or the panels or the trees. When we have them from there, we can uh, remold it if we need to, because the molds don't last forever, but the rocks right. do. So this is the, uh, the graveyard. The graveyard of all the originals. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yep. Two, three. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so not only is it light, it's crazy durable. Really cool. Okay, I've got to ask, what is this? <laughs> okay, so this is, is an extension to the rock hot tub. This is a, an 8,800 pound rock that I've spent about 80 hours on digging. And guess what? It's going to be a bath. A bath? Yeah. Really? Hop in, hop in. Come on. Oh my gosh. It's comfortable. Ooh, okay, yeah. so there's a boulder that's going to go here. Ah. It's going to have the taps here and the, the water spout. This is drain great. the bottom. I'll mold this. This okay. is actually going to my house. I'm going to mold this. You're keeping the original? I'm keeping the original. <laughs> nice. and, uh, and then we'll have lightweight versions to, to, to sell. Is this another spa? Just one more. Cool. This would be like a complete background yeah. for something. Look at this one. It's like a, a step all the way up to a nice basking spot is a kind of what I envisioned it, but that's awesome. Oh, and this one. This would be a perfect ledge, like setting it sideways up against a wall. Man, these shelves are just lined full of possibilities of what yeah. we could use. Look, there's a crocodile. That's awesome. Oh wait, I found my favorite one. <laughs> Part of his head. And another thing, Emily. So in this building, this is about 10,000 square feet. We've got a 60, 70 foot long conveyor belt and um, we just had our first order with Lowe's and this is a, a little garden edging that we make. So have a look at that. So oh, wow. it's sort of to replace metal edging. Okay. Metal edging tends to rust and you can cut your feet on it and the animals cut their feet on it often. Whereas this, you'll just put the little steel spikes through this and you'll bend it and you'll make whatever shape you want on your garden. So oh, that's this, cool. is, this is our first time ever getting into Lowe's into just only 50 stores to start with, but they have about 1,800. So we'll see how this goes once spring starts. Wow, so instead of like piling and styling bricks individually, you just use this wrap. Just use this, yeah. Oh, that's genius. Can you tell us the story or the meaning behind all this? So we're gathering all this together. So we're trying to create the zoo line, okay? So our website's so big and it gets complicated. So if we have just the zoo line, which are the items that I think are most used in zoos, I think that'll make things really, really mm -hmm. easy. So okay. like this could go in the uh, uh, Rex's enclosure and she could like climb up it and bask underneath well, this something. This is like seven and a half feet long. And then there's other things like this. Look at the, the beautiful driftwood here. That's not this the... is just insane. Oh, it yeah. looks exactly like the real thing. We could like take this and screw it into the wall too. Absolutely. For lizards to climb up. Yep. And then you got like this little bowl or you've got this one. This is probably more like what you'll use in a lot of enclosures. Yeah. Well, we had some, a lot of eight foot enclosures planned. Absolutely. And so we could stick one of these in each of those large enclosures for like retics. And, and then I hear there's a, a story behind this one. Well, again, all the rocks, all the, all the products get molded from a particular rock. So we got this rock and, and it was on the ground and this was completely flat and it just looked like the concrete as far as flatness. Okay. And then we're collecting these rocks and we turn it over and look at that. That's what nature had done. I didn't touch this. Wow. It just weathered out. So this is, you know, 
probably millions of years of weathering to get that look. Jeez, I wonder if it was just like water and sand and silt all swirling around carving this out. It's in, I don't know. It, it was in area like Lake Eyre, right in the center of Australia, so maybe, maybe exactly that. Maybe. I saw this ledge in the pile, and this is the exact ledge that's in our garter snake enclosure. So it's like, it's amazing to see the same thing right here. Exactly, yep. The variety is just unlimited. Yeah. And that's the amazing thing about the whole line is, is uh, you know, just dozens and dozens of options. And my whole thing was really to sort of allow people to make, build their own custom reptile habitat. Mm -hmm. And with these parts, uh, the sky's the limit, really. <music> So I know a major part of these enclosures will be the background because we want that to be 3D, kind of like this is. Sure. But I am curious how we're supposed to fit that into the enclosures or cut it to size or... You're going to pick this big panel up. This is about 13 feet by 8 feet. We're going to do a big heave ho. Yep. We're going to lean it against the skid steer here. So one, two, three. Oh, wow. So that could bend either way. We could bend the top over to make a bit of a cave. So oh. then you'd have a staple gun here. Yeah. And you're going to go... And we'll just staple it into place. Staple it into the plywood cage that you're making. Paul, well, let's put it down and we'll go over yep. and we'll show the tests on how tough this stuff really is. All right. So before we do the durability test, Paul brought up a wonderful point in regards to the texture of these panels. And I thought right. we should film you when we asked you about this. So can you explain that again? <laughs> sure, sure. Well, one of the things that we've found, um, if this has got a lot of detail on it, but the commercial ones that uh, the backgrounds you see in the stores, sometimes are very smooth. Yeah. And even though they look good, they're not as functional. So you can find that yeah, something like a leopard gecko, even without this detail, because it has all the rock and sand impregnated, it's not painted, you could actually have a, a relatively mm -hmm. flat sheet. And I've seen leopard geckos just climb up the wall. So the functionality that it adds, it's not just for looks. So I'm excited because that'll offer enrichment just in the background oh, yeah. itself, because they'll yeah. actually have enough grip to climb up the sides. Yep. And so not only will it jet out as ledges, but everywhere they can climb it. So yeah, that exactly. that is very exciting yeah. to me. <laughs> Good. So that's most people are really concerned. You know, is this going to last? There's backgrounds out there that don't last. A few things to give you some confidence to, so you can go ahead and build your whole zoo with our product is, so I have a really powerful power washer here. Oh, this is like a 4,000 PSI power washer. It does nothing, but it'll go straight through the concrete or wood. Um, this will be one of the ledges you use, stuck onto the, like that. Okay. okay, so if this was a real rock, Guaranteed, and me being a, a landscaper who's laid many a real rocks over the years, mm -hmm. if that was a real rock and I hit even just that hard with this, you know, it, it would Holy definitely cow. break off. So here. Oh my anywhere, gosh. it doesn't hurt it. Ah, huh, okay. You can cut it. Wow, so we can slice it to fit the where it needs to go. Oh, correct. Okay. If you need to join one or two pieces together. Okay. Okay, so we go. Oh, nice. Okay, now you can... Oh. Like it holds in there really, really strong. Cool. So let's go inside and I'll show you how you can seam it. All right. So now Stuart is going to show us how to seam the paneling if we have any overlap at all. I just cut this, okay, so... You would, if you put that like that, it's it's noticeable. It's not real bad, but you, it's noticeable. Right. So if you're lucky enough to have one of these, a staple gun, you could use that and you just come along and... Okay, so you could do that all the way along. And then from there, you're gonna grab some um, of this M1, which we could use. You could use silicon. They both work really well. Okay. Um, I just like using that. So we just don't have to be neat with this. In actual fact, you don't really wanna be neat. Otherwise, it shows a straight line. So you just do that, then come along, just smear over it like so. You're just filling in the gap with silicone. Yep. Okay, so then we just dip the, the brush into the powder. Okay, just go like that. Okay. okay, so then you might use a little bit of a lighter color. Okay, here. And then you dip into the darker color. So what's happening at the same time is we're impregnating the M1 with the color, and we're also texturing that to the to the rock texture okay. with, with the brush. Mm -hmm. And with okay. the three colors, it just blends right in? Absolutely, okay. absolutely. This is the next stage of what we're doing with some of these lichens and mosses. And this is new for us, okay? So we're, we're, I'm sick of buying this from Hobby Lobby and places like that and spending a fortune. So now- you Just made your own? We made our own. So this is just some spray adhesive, okay? 
Wow. All right. Well, I may have wandered off from the group and I kind of lost them. So I don't know where they are right now. So I guess uh, I'll go back to the main office and see if I can find them. So we'll walk over there really quick. Oh, there they are. So our next, where have you been? I may have gotten lost. I don't know. What are you guys doing? We're figuring out the decor in all of the enclosures. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have been a part of that. Uh, yeah, well, we are, now you are. We're on the Vietnamese Blue Beauty Rat Snakes enclosure. So that, they're from Southeast Asia. Ah, yeah. So, hey, I, I was thinking about that. Um, you got some panels at the back. What about some sort of bamboo sort of forest thing, maybe a temple like a ruins or something like that? Yep. We can incorporate some some statues perhaps that are sort of decaying and some mm -hmm. pillars that have fallen over or something like that. What do you think? That'd Mo be really cool. Yeah. Vines and moss. I, I did yep. um yep. for sea life I did an old ruins like that. So yep. I've got the I've got some old stone. They're not panels, but they're pieces, so they can be screwed onto the onto the back yep. wall and the side walls and then holes can be cut in, you can have some plants growing out of it and then the vines and all the rest. So we've got the parts again to do that, so that'd be cool. That'd be perfect, because they're yeah. semi-arboreal so they're gonna climb all over those vines too. Yeah, exactly. yep, absolutely, so. Well, I think we have a pretty good idea of what we're going to do for all the decor inside of the zoo. Are you feeling comfortable with everything? <laughs> I think so. I'm great, yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm ready to get going when you are. Awesome. Yeah. Well, we have a few more things to determine, I think, and decide on, but for the most part, I think we're good to go. So this is very Sweet. productive. <laughs> Well, that was an amazing tour of Universal Rocks. I would first and foremost like to thank Paul with Custom Reptile Habitats for introducing us and connecting us with Universal Rocks. And Paul will actually be helping us assemble them at our zoo. I'd also like to thank Stuart and his family for helping us put together and plan all of these epic enclosures that we're going to have at our zoo. Our next step is to wait until all of the huge life-size trees and backdrops and fake rocks are all completed here down at Universal Rocks. And that should be around April when Ed and I fly down here, rent a truck, fill it up with all of this decor, and drive it back home. At that point, Paul and Ed and myself and a team of friends will put together and assemble all of these enclosures and our zoo will really come to life. Thank you, of course, to our Patreon supporters for backing this channel. It's your contributions that are helping fund some of these, like, the fake trees are going to be coming from our Patreon account, so you'll see uh, updates on that in the future too. And we'll do video updates on every progression we have with this zoo, so you'll all be kept in the loop. So thank you again for everybody who's been helping make this possible, and we'll see you next time. Aww, he just wants to come home with us. Okay, bye.